Welcome, Ari Vanhanen. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you, Ari, for joining. Hi, Markus, and thank you. It's nice to see you again. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Ari is also an old business friend of mine. He has worked in the IT industry as a CEO and as a business lead. And now uh, at the latest he has worked in the energy industry. And, and all the time he has been leading B2B sex. So Ari, can you a little bit conclude your backstory to the, to the, the watchers? Yeah, as Marcos told, so that I have a long experience and background in, in uh, several industries. Uh, mainly in service business, so that uh, uh, that has been mostly my career, what I've been doing. And, and what comes to companies, I have worked for uh, listed company, but also for private equity of company. Uh, the latest assignments, assignments what I have had has been in energy business, where I have been heading the country organization, a little bit smaller than what I, I used to work in, in, in uh, listed company. Okay. And, uh, that, that's shortly my story, so that what I'll be doing. Yeah. So, so now we are talking about strategy and uh, and the core themes in the focus areas in the strategy. So, so I know that you did the strategy round some time ago. Uh, can you a little bit tell about how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, we kicked off the uh, strategy process, and and um, it was posted by the new owner of the company. I mean, this energy company I worked for was owned by a bigger energy company and they divested that and the, then came the new owner, private equity, and they kicked off the strategy process. And they came to very strong, uh, how should I say, focus on, on growth. So that, uh, and that was what they were looking for. And, and uh, we started the strategy process then. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh... What was the kind of main point in the process? What did you came to? Yeah, actually, when we were running the process, uh, first uh, it was it was done by quite a big group of people involved in the process. But uh, at the end, as we were the service company, we were considering and focusing on what is our competitive edge in this new situation, and we came to the conclusion that our competitive edge, the competitive edge will be built on the customer experience. And that was, this thinking was supported also by the customer. We were doing quite big questionnaires to our customers and it was clear feedback sort from customers that what they are expecting from us, it yeah. was reliability and also the level of service and the quality of service. Of course, the price was, there are also important things, but those two things are the reliability and uh, the service capability came as the first ones out from the, this questionnaire. Okay, so so the, the, the kind of main focus areas in, in focus area in the in the strategy was this customer experience to boost that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is a very interesting theme, Ari, for everybody because everybody should should be. Uh, there's always uh, uh, room to improve in that sense. So can you a little bit open up that? What was the key? How did you implement a boost of customer experience? <laughs> Yeah, first, uh, when we were doing this strategy process and, and uh, started uh, with uh, this topic, I mean, that, uh, of course, the key question for ourselves was that what this customer experience is about. And we involved quite a big, big number of our, our employees. I mean, that we were total 150 in my organization, but there was about 30 people involved when we started and, and the thing that what it's about. And uh, then, as a result, one result of that was that uh, we thought that first we have to consider on our sales, how we are doing the sales, and also the uh, account management, so that how we are going to take care and manage our customer relationship. And those were the first things we focused on. So, so the, it was interesting that you have to first think on that. What is a customer experience, and where does it come from? So, so uh, can you give a short brief that what was the end result of that discussion? Of course, that was interesting. Uh, as you as you think the customer experience, so that uh, first you have to think what are the touch points where you meet the customers, and and, and of course. Uh, you might focus that on sales and account management, but it's it's much much broader thing. I mean that 
it concerns even your support functions in your organization, what type of invoices do you send your customers, what is the digital interface, how the customer communicates with us, for example, our case, it was the extranet, and uh, that kind of things. It, it's so many things, so that, uh, and, and pro thing, and, and, but we thought that we will start with the sales and, and this account management. So, so when, when you did this touch point analysis, uh, and then uh, did you find any gap, any delta where you have to improve? Was it easy to find those red flags? Definitely, yeah. we found several of those where we, we have room to improve. And, and, and of course, there are then easier things, but also things which requires a bit more effort. And, and, uh, but there was clear long hanging through it so that you can implement it too based on your feedback from the customer where they thought, for example, one thing was that how we are reporting to our customers. Customers expect for, from, our, from us so that, for example, how much energy they have used. Yeah. Much basis. And that, that was clear thing so that we had to improve and we initiated the internal project where we started to develop this. And it actually it led to the much bigger thing. We started to talk about IoT so that how we collect the data from the customer, how we analyze the data, and uh, what we noticed was a great thing that how big value we can provide for our customers with the quite simple, doing quite simple things so that actually okay. all the data we had already, and then, the, then we had a little bit built on top of that what we already had, so that it, it was very interesting finding in our case. So uh, a little bit because I mean, first when you started this this touch point thing, that it, it sounds to me like you have a lot of details there involved. That, That's that, true. So so how was how was it? Uh, I mean, if you see so many details, you might feel that the picture is all too fragmented. How did you kind of simplify that in order to get some kind of pieces that you can swallow? <laughs> Well, actually, as I said, so that we first focused on this couple of things, I mean, the sales work and how we are doing the sales and, and also this account management. I, I noticed that that's the, that's the most important interface between you and your customers, so that you basically daily basis are in contact with your customers. And we thought that uh, this is something that uh, we have to first succeed and uh, put in place. Also, this was driven by our strategy, as I said, so that the new owner, uh, as we concluded our strategy, said we have very strong, strong focus on sales or uh, in, in growth, so that uh, and that was the expectation of our, our new owner. So that yeah. it was quite obvious that those are the first thing we need to have focus But Ari, can you, can you give me an example, for instance, in sales and account management, something now concrete? What, what was the first delta you found or the biggest delta? First thing in new sales, <laughs> but the first thing was that uh, we separated so that the, what is the new sales, what is the account management. So that I think that many times people fail uh, by organizing this two things together and I have seen that account management is more farming business and then the new sales more hunting business and, and we separated these two things and, and built the organization based on this thinking. And then concerning the selling and, and uh, we thought that how we should do the selling and uh, we came to the conclusion that it's, it's as we are a service company, it's a solution selling what we do and we decided to implement so-called solution selling uh, process and, and method in our organization. Yeah, this, that's a big change because I, I have seen that also many times from selling kind of products and services to sell solutions. That's a quite big mental map change, mindset change. Did yeah, I mean, that, 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 in your case. <laughs> and in, a, in our case, I think that it was even a bigger change in that sense so that because the organization, when I joined the company, it was more production oriented and focused company. Okay. And then when you think so that we want to put the customer into the middle and start to think it's more customer driven company so that it's huge. I mean, that mindset change, but also cultural change, what you have to do in organization. Oh, but, but then that's big. That, that, that is really a big transformation. So, uh, 
open up steel area. I mean, how, how in the hell were you able to do, do such a change and how did, long did it take and did you reach results there? Well, actually, when you're talking about cultural change, it, it takes time. And, and uh, I think that uh, uh, one track is that you might think that, okay, if you implement something so that you are ready, but I think that it, it's a long way to go. And, and uh, when we started, so that uh, first is all, all this solution selling training, it took about half a year because we are building the sales process, implementing the sales tools and, and so on, so that uh, it took quite quite many months, but um, uh, we managed to do, and uh, the first result what we saw that was in our pipeline, so that how the pipeline value started to grow, and that was interesting to see, and, and, and also the outcomes from the pipeline, so that we started to close the cases better, and that it was clear result from, from the process and what we did. Did you, were you able to shorten the, the, the time to close the, these? In our business, the lead time is quite long and, and uh, it's typical in this energy business because the things what we do, sell to our customers are quite big invest, requires quite big investment and, and in that sense, so that uh, perhaps we did see so much that we could shorten that, but I mean that the pipeline management and the outcome of quality was much, much better than what it, it was in okay. past. Interesting. So, uh, and now, now when you look on that, so what would you say was the number one benefit of the whole thing? I think that the, it was the mindset change and, and thinking how we think so that we put really the customer to the middle yeah. of our thinking. So that I think that this was the great success what we managed to do so that we started to think from customer point of view. As I said, so that earlier it was more production oriented, and, and yeah. the core our energy plan was the so, core was how we were thinking with the things. But what did people say in the begin, beginning of the process, and how did they comment when they started to get these ahas? ahas? Yeah, I think that one success in this process was that uh, first we engaged quite a big no number of, of people. We were still a small organization, but it was something like 30. 20, 30 people in, involved and, and the process how we manage all that and I think that this is one of the key factors for how to succeed in this process of transformation so that the people have to be involved so that they can feel that they can influence and have their own opinion and, and influence to the process and to the end result and I think that this was the great thing and, and uh, make these things to happen. Yeah. But Ari, let's talk about challenges and, and, and pitfalls and traps. What is your comment? Well, what did you find <laughs> that didn't fly? And well, of course, I think that as I said, so that it's it's long journey, and uh, after half a year, you must, must get a little bit tired. So that how things are proceeding, and might be that you don't even yourself see those things that what are happening there. But uh, my, my advice is that, and the trap is that don't give up so that it's, it's long journey. It, it, it's, uh, uh, requires full commitment from yourselves and, and, and you have to work to talk and, and so on. So that there are many, many things so that yeah. you shouldn't give up. Sometimes you feel so that uh, things are not moving, but afterwards when you look backwards so that you can see that the things are moving. But I think that this, this is the, because trap so that uh, you might think that okay you give that that assignments to your organization uh, but uh, and then you roll your thumbs and yeah, yeah. 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 you have to be you have to be, I would say so my advice would be put yourself in the game you have to be there in the game and, and uh, yeah yeah, but, but after half a year and one year and one and a half year, I mean, then you, you start to feel like a tape recorder that you do these speeches and remind all the time. Did you have that? Yeah. yeah, that's true. So that the yeah, last, uh, as you know, that uh, you have a lot of strategy, Marco, so that uh, then when you go to the implementation, so that you have to repeat, repeat, repeat the same message. Yeah. And uh, for yourself, so that it sounds a little bit uh, stupid, so that you repeat the same, but the organization doesn't feel the same, so that they need this message and you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, even though you have worked in a in a little bit bigger company, but but what is your advice to smaller companies because they are probably also having this solution selling that they need to have that. So what what would be your advice? My advice would be so that uh, engage the people. I mean that, and uh, you have to show. Uh, I mean that first you have to be committed and, and show that to the organization. Otherwise, if you are not committed and, and you can show that up, so that I mean that there is a big risk that uh, yeah. this is the, my, my advice, so to put yourself in the game and, and uh, you will succeed. Ari, I think that this gave a lot of thoughts from, from, from many of us and, and, and we have to really think that to make a cultural change in an asset heavy industry, it's, it's really a big thing. And, and also all the principles that you were talking about, I think they are directly applicable to, to smaller, even, even a few years old startup. I mean, they might have also, also the same. Customer experience is so important. Uh, but hey, still, did, did, you, did you experience any kind of, that when people talk to customers, did they, their language, did you hear that kind of comments? That, did they start to speak in another way or something? Yeah, perhaps. And, and uh, of course, I mean, that's still a big thing in our organization was that uh, there is all the field operations, what we had about uh, 100 people, so called blue color workers. And, and, and uh, there you have perhaps the biggest work to do so that they really change the mind of, of those people. They so love this their own energy plan and they want to fix all the things. Of course they take good care of the customer, but then how you should behave, how you should talk to your customers, what sort of language you should use and, and so on so that uh, it's it's quite big work or job what you have to do there. Yeah. I, I have a known experience that I was I think until I was 41 years old. Yeah, that was the day when I realized something that I, I have always, you know, talked to techno bubble to my customers, you know, I have yeah. talked about the products and the features and the services we have. And when I was 41 years old, I realized that, hey, why don't I first ask the customer, you know, yeah. that when, when we are, you know, this is the game I, I'm in. And I play football, and, and that's my, my game. And, and then to ask the customers right up front, what is the situation in your company concerning yeah. this? And then I got the answer, and then I knew what kind of thing I should say next. Before that, I had a menu of, of all products and services, and I showed them slides one after other, and at the seventh, I noticed they started to be interested. So it, solution selling is it, uh, very much also that, that you have to listen very much. Very much, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, that's the basic idea in the solution selling is that the uh, customer has to have the pain. And you have to find out what is the customer's pain. If the customer doesn't have any pain, so that it's quite clear that he doesn't need anything, so that you have to solve then the customer's pain. And I think I like very much this solution selling concept and thinking. So that I have been implemented that several times, and, and uh, that's the clue there. And, and, but uh, okay, it's interesting. Yeah, if the customer is very aware of his pain, it, it's somewhat easier to sell. If he doesn't have any pain in, in the reality, you can sell anything to him. But then I, I have my experience is that he can also have a pain, but it's hidden. That's true. And that's the nice, nice of this sales work, I have to say, so that what I like very much so that uh, the customer even doesn't know that he has the pain, and as you said, so that it might be hidden, and, yeah. and uh, that's the interesting. And then, of course, it requires that you can put the right questions to your customers and, and uh, lead to somehow the discussion and try to find and uh, help the yeah. customer to find the pain. And I think that I mean some people hate hate sales because they think that salespeople are manipulative, you know. But yeah. I have another um, kind of mindset of salespeople. I think they are just very skilled in finding the hidden pains. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think sales is really, and uh, one thing I is still that I have started to say that sales is is a con consultation for free. Yeah, yeah. I have to use the same. I have said that the consulting type selling. We are doing consulting type selling. I don't know if it's the right wording, but anyway, you are helping yeah. the customer. Yeah, 
And very many people are so allergic to listen to sales people, they want to close them. But I have started to say that, hey, listen to them, they are consulting you for free. Yeah. <laughs> you true. don't have to buy. Ari, hey, thank you very much. A very good discussion and, and, and hope to, hope to meet, you, meet you again soon. So thank you, Ari, and, and see you later. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank see you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.